All right, we're at the flay table. We got some lion fish. Let's check them out. All right. Here's all the little ones from the day. And you can see there's about 20 pounds of little ones. We uh, sold 30 pounds to the restaurant and now we're stuck with all of these smaller ones. This is about the biggest of the small ones. It's not a bad size. You can see the crazy spines and these are ready to clean. All right, as you can see here, we have plenty to do here. It's gonna be about maybe an hour to flay all of these. I'm probably gonna go get a bucket and give the lady over at the restaurant who likes to make fish soup and things like that, uh, some of the smaller ones. And then I will clean all of these ones up and put them in the fridge or the freezer and you know have them for a get together or for to cook them up. It's the only fish I eat. So when I, when I wanna eat fish, these little ones are the ones I get. I take all their little bodies and throw them in here afterwards. So even though the, the rest of the fish gets eaten by catfish, sometimes a jack will fly in here. I've actually seen what I think was a shark slam into uh, the lionfish and uh, it scared all the other catfish. So they were up for, they were in for a big surprise there. All right, yet another female. It seems like every fish I have is a female. See the egg pouch? Females all day long. You can usually tell it's a female, not only by the egg sac, but by the facial plate. The facial plates are usually really spiky on a male because they use those to fend off uh, other males from, from the female they're going after or to kind of fight for territory on a reef area if they were needing to. Um, usually it's uh, a threat display, you know, they'll wrestle with them. They'll put their faces together and fight and wrangle around and uh, that's why they have them. But the females, of course, don't need to do that. So they have very small face plates and they're much easier to fillet because when you put your fingers against them, it's not super duper sharp and it doesn't poke into your finger. So that's always nice. And here's the catfish caviar. Now people always say they want to see this. So here we go. So these catfish are going to town on all of this tasty stuff, flipping and flopping. Every time we drop one in, they just go bonkers and they love it. So these fish are originally from the South Pacific. So Oceania all the way up to Asia. And we have uh, extreme overpopulations. When I visited uh, Asia uh, recently, I saw two red lionfish the entire time I was there. Um, and today I saw with combined total of about a hundred. So in one day I saw a hundred and over in Asia where they're supposed to be in 30 dives. Today I did three dives. In 30 dives, I saw two. I saw a bunch of other species of lionfish, um, more of them, but of this specific species, I saw two. Uh, so that that is the problem here. They, people say, oh, these are just fish, leave them alone, or they're not invasive, you're crazy. Listen guys, that is simply not true. These are extremely, extremely invasive. They have no animals to kill them. So we're just trying to help balance the ecosystem until a predator finally emerges. But unfortunately, that's not going to be for until long after I'm dead and gone. Believe you me, it'll take uh, it'll take a thousand years. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a scientist, but it'll take a heck of a long time uh, for these fish to start being eaten at the level they need to be eaten for this to make a dent in their population. The fish desperately would, they would love to eat lionfish, but they can't figure out how to do it because they're so well protected and they're, it's not worth getting poked in the face. So every time they come to take a bite of this fish, it turns and it protects them. Every time they try to get at it and it pokes them in the face and they say, whoa, I'm backing off. I'm not gonna try to eat that fish. Forget that, hurts too bad, I'll move on. That's the problem. Over where they're from, they have a lot of other fish that have figured out ways around that um, or maybe the venom isn't quite as bad it doesn't hurt as bad so maybe they choose to uh, put up with the pain uh, another thing too is there's just far more of those predators larger groupers they have white tip reef sharks and gray reef sharks that hunt the reef indiscriminately hunting anything that moves so that's a, a big part of it as these guys will hunt anything that moves so if a lionfish moves 15 sharks are gonna eventually get the bite and they're gonna they're gonna take it down. Our sharks hunt like solitary. There's only one shark and he gets poked in the face and he backs off, that's the end of the story. So that's the main reason. White tip reef sharks, gray reef sharks, 
bunch of different types of lionfish. They got frogfish on the reef eating them. They've got tons of different types of trumpet fish and things like that. We have trumpet fish, but they didn't evolve alongside of uh, the lionfish. So in fact, they might eat them a couple of them when they're very small, but trumpet fish have very small mouths. So they eat them maybe when they're tiny, but they only stay tiny for a sh very short period of time. So once again, that is not effective to get these fish gone. So when we kill them, all the thousands of people killing these lionfish around the state and throughout the Caribbean and now in the Mediterranean, all these people trying to do what I'm doing right now. You can do it. Anyone can do it. I encourage you to. I'm, this is not special. I'm not trying to be like, oh, this guy's the only guy who does this. A lot of people do this, but we do specialize only in lionfish. We don't hunt anything else and it's our only priority. I will not go diving in Florida without bringing my spear and my zookeeper every single time I go diving. I have no, I've seen, I've dove plenty of times here. It's not worth it if I'm not killing lionfish because every time I see one and I can't kill it, it frustrates me because I, I know it's out there slaughtering all my little friends down there. So these guys gotta go no matter how tiny they are and no matter how big they are. And then we got ones three times the size of this one today. So they're all over the darn place. This is the lionfish's air bladder. This thing is the buoyancy compensation device for the lionfish, watch this. See the air come out of it? They use that to regulate um, how they can stay afloat. So if they wanna just float in mid water, they'll, they'll breathe through their gills and transfer the air, the oxygen that they're using their gills to obtain and then fill their air bladder with that air depending on the, the amount of air they need to stay afloat in the proper area that they want to stay afloat. So they can fill, they can stay on the ups, underside of a cave and cling to the top of the cave by filling their air bladder and then that kind of lifts them up more and then they can easily just cling upside down to a bottom of a cave. And then they also use their little fins here as like a finger. As you can see here, these are like little fingers and they use those to grip rocks. And they're not the only fish that does that. Almost. Tons of different reef fish actually do that. Um, even groupers, they use their fins as feet. And then such fish as like frogfish have actually adapted to those, have those fins actually change into feet. Um, so evolution is crazy. They all started off originally as just a basic fish shape and then hundreds of different shapes, sizes, you know, fins going this way, fins going that way. Um, these guys have venom, some, some don't have venom, some have glowing uh, body parts that have a uh, iridescent glow to them that emit a certain light that only the fish, certain fish can see. The fish are pretty amazing. As you can see here, this one is a female. This is the eggs you can see coming out. Yummy. These are the eggs that come out of her body and she can lay thousands and thousands of eggs every three days. So when you cut this open, you have an egg sac on both sides and uh, these eggs will then uh, repopulate more lionfish. But when we kill them, it's like a double bonus because now we're keeping all of these eggs from having the potential to make more lionfish. So the more we kill, the better, especially with the females. All right, here's another one for the catfish. See this one? Just trying to get full. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Probably have two more that I can flay here. And then we'll be done. I can go home and clean the boat. Rinse off my gear. Recharge my scooter. Recharge my other equipment. Never ends. So this is just a prime example. We got up at 6 a.m. And now it is around, I think, 7.30. And I still have to clean the boat and clean my gear. So I'll be done around nine o'clock. So that is, do the math for me here, guys. 15 hour day, hunting lionfish. I love to do it, so I'll do it. All right. So you can see the spoils of war. We got all the lionfish all flayed up here. There's at least two and a half pounds there, I'd say. And uh, why not, you know? You transfer over a uh, bunch of little tiny fish and you get enough food for 10 or 15 people to have fish tacos. So Woo! keep uh, getting those lionfish and we'll talk to you guys later.